Welcome to Ask Your Academic. Today's session will cover the MSc Infection Biology with Specialisms and we're joined by Dr Tansy Hammerton who is going to cover off uh, all the questions that have been submitted beforehand today. If you've got any additional questions um, feel free to use the chat box and we'll do our best to answer those too. Um, we are recording this session so if you miss anything don't worry uh, we'll send the link out in a couple of days for you just to watch back anything you might have missed. Um, I'll also pop some uh, helpful links into the chat box, so if you've got any questions about accommodation, funding, things like that, they should hopefully help uh, answer those. Um, and we've also got an online postgraduate event coming up on the 7th of May, so that would be a good place that if you don't quite find your answer, you could attend uh, the sessions there. Um, so yeah, so I think that covers all of everything that I've got to say. So uh, Tansy, would you like to introduce yourself and give us a bit of an intro into the programme? Um, yeah, sure. So... Um... Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm the programme director um, for the MSc in Infection Biology. Um, I'm a senior lecturer at the School of Infection and Immunity um, here at the University of Glasgow. Um, so I have a background in infection biology. Um, I studied bacteriology, parasitology and virology um, as an undergraduate um, at Cambridge. And then I moved to Manchester, did a PhD on E. coli. And then I came up to Glasgow where I moved into studying parasites, um, did a postdoc, some fellowships. Um, working on Trypanosoma brucei and looking at um, the cell cycle and now you know I've had my own lab for a number of years now um, and we continue to research um, cell division in kinetoplastid parasites so trypanosomes and leishmania. Um, I teach on a wide range of courses from level one up to um, postgraduate courses um, level one undergraduate up to postgraduate courses um, anything to do with infection biology or molecular biology really um, also have a strong interest in public engagement and science communication so I do some teaching on that and I also I'll, I'll come back to this in a minute in terms of the opportunities that you'll have on, on the course when you come um, but we do offer opportunities for, for students to get involved in that as well um, so I've got a slideshow that will hopefully um, Give you a good introduction to the program and answer some of the questions that have been um, submitted before beforehand so i'll just open that up now um and let's just get that going. okay so i hope that's fine and you can all see that so i'm going to talk mainly about the msc in infection biology um i'll talk a bit about the option to have a specialism um, added added to that that degree title, um, and I'll briefly mention a couple of the shorter courses that we offer as well. Um, as I said, I'm the program director um, for the MSc. It's a twelve month course. Um, it's full time. It starts in mid September. Um, it covers 180 credits of of, of taught material. Um, and then, as I said, you have this option to specialise, and you can specialise in either bacteriology, parasitology, or virology. Now, although most people will stay for the whole year, there are the options to do um, some shorter courses. So if you just do 120 credits, so that's two semesters, um, you can graduate with a postgraduate diploma. And if you just do the first semester, 60 credits, then you can get a postgraduate certificate. Um, so how is it structured the course? Um, so in semester one, you'll, you'll come, you'll have an orientation week. Um, and then you'll start your two compulsory courses in this semester. So one of these is um, called Research Skills for Immunology and Infection Biology. And you'll be doing this alongside the MSc um, Immunology and Inflammatory Disease students. Um, so this covers um, a, a wide range of, of skills, really. So what we're aiming to do in this, because you will come to this MSc with very different backgrounds, very different experiences in, in different areas, we're aiming to try and get you all up to a sort of equivalent um, stage and standard and expertise um, at a wide range of things. So you cover um, things like basic calculations and statistics. Um, you cover literature searching and critical analysis of the published literature. We cover things like research ethics, research integrity and plagiarism. We talk about data analysis and data presentation. You do some science communication in terms of how you present things both in written and oral format. Um, you also do a series of labs in this course to brush up on, on basic lab skills in, in microbiology and immunology. Um, you get to learn about image analysis, animal models and some molecular biology. So it's a really broad course. And the idea is to qu equip you with all the skills that you'll need to successfully complete your MSc programme. 
You also do a 40 credit course called Host Pathogen Interactions. Um, this covers the infection process, um, immunity, host immunity, um, how pathogens evade or immodulate the, the host immune response. We cover virulence factors, diagnostics, prevalence, treatment, vaccines, emerging diseases, and it, and it covers both bacteria, parasites and viruses um, within that course. So you get a wide um, introduction to, to pathogens in general. Um, one of the highlights of semester one um, for most for most students is that they get an overnight trip to SCENE, also known as the Scottish Centre for Ecology and the Natural Environment. And this is a, set in a really beautiful location. So it's um, basically on Loch Lomond in the Trossachs National Park. Um, and there's a research centre there that um, you go to overnight to give um, your oral presentations for the research skills course. And this, not only do you, do you do your oral presentations and get some teaching regarding how to present a material, but you also get to socialize um, with your peers and, and with staff, and you also get the opportunity to do a little bit of exploration of the countryside as well. Um, so that's a really nice feature of semester one. In semester two, this is where you can customize your MSc. So you take three optional courses. So you have to take two shorter ones, two 10 credit courses, and then one slightly longer 20 credit course. Um, there's around about 10 or 11 options you can choose from. Um, and so they cover things like bioinformatics, omic technologies, imaging, animal models, including a, a, a new course that we introduced this year, which um, actually taught you how to work with animals. Um, current trends and challenges, diagnostics, how to commercialize research, a wide range of options here. So you can pick what you want um, and, and customize your MSc. It also gives you an opportunity to learn with students from other MSc programs, because a lot of the a lot of the options courses are open to several different programs. And then at the end of semester two, you do another compulsory course, and this is to prepare you for your research project, which takes place in semester three. So this is called designing a research project. Um, and it will teach you about designing and testing hypotheses, how to collect data and organize that data and record it, um, experimental design, research ethics and integrity again, how to write a good protocol, and also some um, science communication, how you tell people about, about your research. Um, so it's really designed to prepare you for semester three. You do it based on the research project that you've chosen. So you're really starting to find out uh, in this design and research project course about your project before you actually start in the lab. Now, we've been asked about how do you choose your research project? So a list of all the projects that are on offer that year will get published. And then we ask you to choose your top five choices from that list. And then it's really a juggling act. Um, for the academics to try and ensure that all students get one of their top five choices. And we, we normally manage this. So you would expect, unless everybody for some reason decided to choose the same projects and there just wasn't the capacity to host everybody in, in those projects, um, normally you will get one of those choices. We don't base it on academic achievement. We just try and make sure that everybody where possible gets one of the projects they really want to do. Um, now, specialisms come into this as well and I'll talk more about that in just a minute um, but the project itself it's a 60 credit module um, the whole project lasts sort of three to four months you'll be in the lab for about 14 weeks um, if you choose to do it in a lab you can either do a wet lab project um, you can do a dry project where, which we mean by things like bioinformatics you could do one that combines um, both some lab work plus some computer work as well and if you don't fancy lab work we also have an option where you can do a systematic review and that's um, a sort of critical analysis um, based on literature um, and it's more than just reading a few papers and doing a dissertation you really have to get into the nitty-gritty of how you review all that literature look at how um, how strong the evidence is for for the whatever question you've set yourself to investigate. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility there. And as I say, we, we try our, our utmost to make sure that everybody gets a project that they're really happy with. Um, and oh, I should say also at the, the end of that project, you have a, a, a at the end of that lab time, you then have a couple of weeks where you can write up that project um, with some help from your supervisor. Um, and you'll also prepare um, a presentation of that project as part of the assessment for that course. Um, and and so, so overall, it will take about four months for that whole, th whole process from, from start to finish. Um, so 
as I said, you can, if you want to, you can choose to specialize in one of these areas, bacteriology, parasitology, or virology. Um, you don't have to, you can graduate with an MSc in infection biology with no specialism if you prefer. It's entirely up to you. Some students like to have a specialism on there to reflect their particular interest in a field. Others like to keep their options open and just have an infection biology degree. If you want a specialism, then you have to make sure that you've qualified for that. And the way you do that is to complete 90 credits in that particular specialism. And that comprises 10 credits of an optional course, um, 20 credits from the design and research project and 60 credits from your research project itself. So if you wanted to do specialise in bacteriology, you would need to pick a bacteriology research project. That means your design and research project option would be based on that. Um, and then within the optional courses, some of them have um, particular topics you can choose and you would have to choose that bacteriology topic, for example. Um, similar for parasitology, virology, there's slightly more options to get your, your optional course because we have one course that's specifically about virology called Emerging Viruses. So you could take that and, and that would count as well. Or you do an option for a virology option within one of the other options. Now, when you choose, it's up to you. We tend to ask if you, you have a preference quite early on, maybe at the end of semester one, beginning of semester two, um, when you're choosing your options. So we can make sure that if you want to specialize, you have actually chosen the right options for that. Um, also, it gives us a heads up on what you might want to do for a project. But I have to say, you can, you can change your mind. You can decide that actually, after having studied some of this in more detail, you don't want a, 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 a specialism anymore and you can cancel it and say, no, I just want to graduate um, with, with the basic MSc. Um, or you might not decide that you want one until very late on. Some students only decide on the morning of the final exam board and then let us know. The important thing is if you want a specialism, you can only get one if you've already qualified for that in the terms of the courses that you've chosen to take. But whether you actually take it is really up to you at the end. Okay, we we're also asked where you'll be taught. So most of the teaching will carry out on our Gilmore Hill campus. Um, so we have a newly opened um, postgraduate teaching hub at the Adam Smith Business School. Um, and so that's really a multidisciplinary home for all of our PGT students. So you, you may find you get some teaching in that, it's certainly a base you, you can spend some time in. Um, lectures. Um, could be across university buildings. Um, you might find that you have some in the ARC, which is another one of our new buildings, the Advanced Research Centre. We've also got the James McCune Smith Learning Hub, another new building that opened recently. Um, it's got really, really nice teaching facilities and also some great social space and um, eating um, options as well. There's lots of catering in, in the building too. Um, you might be in an older part of the university. So we have some lectures in the um, Joseph Black building here. Um, you might be lucky enough to go and have some lectures in the really old part um, of the university, which is really beautiful. Um, for your labs, some will take part in, in the Joseph Black building here. Some will be in the Boyd Orr building. Um, believe it or not, this slightly concrete building is a, is a listed building, um, but it's I think it's from the 60s or 70s, but it's been recently refurbished. So it's really, really nice facilities inside. Um, and then for your research projects, it depends what subject you take. If you're doing bacteriology or parasitology, you'll most likely be in the Sir Graham Davis building here down on the Gilmore Hill campus. If you do a virology project, you're likely to be up um, the road at our gas cube campus. It's about three miles away um, where, the, where our vet school is as well. Um, really nice green campus there. And you'll be in um, this, this very nice gold building here where the center of virus research is based. Um, other opportunities I just want to make you aware of as well as getting your MSc, you can also um, set yourself up to get a graduate skills award, which is a form of formal recognition for any extracurricular activities you get involved with while you're here. Um, there are opportunities for you to do some paid work, particularly useful for overseas students when you're having to pay higher fees. Um, so you can do that by demonstrating for undergraduate practicals, for example, or becoming a student guide, perhaps for an open day, things like that. Um, and then there's also options to get involved in volunteering. So public engagement. I run some events during the year um, for school kids and for, for families. And I always ask for volunteers from our master's students. You can become a STEM ambassador. You can volunteer with other people there. There's also the SRC, the Students and Representative Council, who also 
have some volunteering options open to you in your local community if you want to really get involved in life in Glasgow while you're here. Um, now, obviously, we hope you all successfully complete your degree and you get to graduate um, in the December after the, the, the year's complete in the Butte Hall. Um, rather than these purple hoods here in this photo, you get to wear these nice yellow hoods here. Um, and the, it's really nice, Butte Hall, really grand um, hall and, and very beautiful. Um, so I was also asked to talk about what happens next for our, our graduates. So some like to stay um, in the academic side and so they'll go on and do either a PhD or they'll get a position in a research lab, either a technician or a research assistant post. And some go into academic research, some go into the clinical fields and some go into industry. We also have people who work for life sciences companies. Um, so that may not be in a, it could be in a lab, but it might not be. Um, it might be in product development. It might be in technical, um, giving advice to researchers who want to use those products. It might be in sales. Um, we also have students go into the food and farming industries. And then we have students who um, go into teaching, quite often um, academic teaching, perhaps at you know, if they've come from abroad, they maybe go back to their home institution and, and pass on the knowledge and the skills that they've learned here to, to a new cohort of students. Um, and I, I was also asked to say something about how you could prepare um, for coming here. Um, now, obviously, we'll teach you everything that you need to know in terms of the subject knowledge that you need um, for, for each of your, your courses and options. Um, but I would say some things that you can do to prepare if English is not your first language. Obviously, you'll have to have um, an English qualification to be accepted as a student here. But I think the more you can do to practice your English between now and, and when you arrive, the better. Remember, you're going to be taught in English. You're going to be writing your assignments in English, having to read papers in English, communicate with your peers and your teaching staff in English. And so the better you can speak and understand it then the easier it's going to be um, to keep up with your course. The other thing um, is to read some science, particularly if you've not been studying for a while. I think, you know, you can read news articles, read up on some scientific papers and reviews in areas that of infection biology that particularly interest you and really get into the habit of, of reading regularly. You're going to have to do a lot of it during your studies and really getting into practice of doing that and critically analysing the, the work that you read would be a really good skill to have. Um, if you're not great on maths, then try and brush up on your basic calculations and statistics before you come, because you'll need those um, throughout your course, but for your lab practicals and, and your project in particular. And then the other thing I would recommend you do is to really read up about life in Glasgow in the UK. If you're not from the University of Glasgow, particularly if you're not from the UK either, then you know, coming and moving to a new city, it, it's always a bit daunting. There's always a lot of things to to find out and, and learn about. And the more you can prepare yourself for that, then the easier it's going to be for you to concentrate on your studies from the from the start, start of your course. Um, so there's lots of really good information at this website here on the Graduate School website. So I'd really recommend you have a look at that. If you can have a chat to um, current students or students who've previously um, studied here and find out how the university works and, and, and about life in Glasgow and the UK in general. I think that will really help make sure that you settle in really quickly when you come. Um, so I think that's hopefully all the questions that were submitted beforehand that I've answered. But if there's any more, I'm very happy um, to answer them. Naomi, were there any that have popped up? Nope, we have stunned silence. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, you've managed to cover a lot of information in like 20 minutes or something there. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, no questions. <laughs> um, what I will say is if that was quite a lot of information that if you do maybe go away and think about anything um, on our programme webpage, we've got our administration contact details that if you think of anything, don't sit and worry about it email the administration team because they're great and they'll get back to you and help um, all they can. Um, I'll actually pop that link in the, the email address in the chat as well for you. Um, but yeah, uh, that email address there. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think that's it's maybe a good place. We could give it a little minute, but um, yeah, it's maybe people just need the time to go away, digest what you've said, think about it. And then if they've got questions about maybe certain courses, their specialism, they can then get in touch. Um, 
just you did mention a couple of the courses and kind of went into a bit of detail but on our web page all the courses are linked or most of them should be linked um, and you'll get further information about um, the contents within them and then it touches on assessments I think that I don't think that's something that was really mentioned was assessments and exams um, I'm guessing that's different across the different courses what um, kind of that entails yeah so for the research skills um, module the, the first one at the beginning there's a lab practical assessment um, there's a lab report and there's an oral presentation for the host pathogen interactions course um, there's a couple of exam papers so one's based on writing essays and the other one is based on I think sort of paper analysis and, and problem solving and things like that so you, you get some practice sessions on that before you actually have to take the exam the options courses are all very different some you write a grant proposal some you give presentations some you have to do some coding for if it's bioinformatics so there's there's a whole range of different um, assessments there for the design a research project as far as I'm aware, you, you have to give a presentation and also write a grant proposal um, um, for your project. And then the project itself, you write a project report and you, and you give an oral presentation. So it's quite varied the way in which you get assessed. And so that I mean, I think that's a good thing because it means that you know, you can showcase different skills that you have. You learn different skills, but also, you know, if there's a particular form of assessment you don't like, your whole course is not going to be based on that. You'll, you'll have various options to pick up your marks elsewhere if necessary. Perfect. And then just a little question that's come in there. Um, are exams online or are they on campus or is that yet to be decided? Um, as, I, this year they were, they weren't on campus, but they were in person. So we, um, I think they were at the SECC um, for host pathogen interactions, um, which is a, and sort of an exhibition center um quite it's it's in glasgow it's, it's not very far from the university but they were in person um it depends what i mean obviously there's a lot of continuous assessment um in the course um any oral presentations they're all in person um but um yeah the obviously written assignments you just do in, on your own and submit those right. Um, well, we've covered off all the questions that were submitted beforehand and the chat box, we've cleared that. Um, so I think we'll probably wrap up there, give people some time to digest that. We'll get the recording out to you in the next few days. And like I said, if you've got any questions, please do follow up with us. Um, and yeah, and hopefully we'll see all of you in September. So thank you. Yeah, bye bye. <laughs> all right. Bye. <laughs>